Howdy folks! This is going to be part 2 of the Leak Code Problem 3, Longest Substring Without Repeating Characters. If you haven't watched the first part, I would def definitely recommend you do that first. Um, in the first part, we went over an O of n3, or cubed, which was ran out of memory, and then we refactored it into an O of n squared. Now, O of n squared for this problem is probably pretty appropriate, but we also kind of brainstormed a little bit about how to do an O of n. So in this video, I'm going to make an attempt towards that. Um, I can't guarantee I'm actually going to get it um, within any reasonable amount of time. Because for a lot of problems like this, there is an O of n solution, but it can take a very long time to find it sometimes. So let's take a look. Um, so what we are talking about, basically an O of n, I'm actually going to comment this out just so that we have it there. An O of n solution means we're looping over our array basically or string basically once but that's not completely um true we can loop over it multiple times they just can't be nested so if we have four loops that go over the string as long as they're not nested that's still technically o of n because that becomes o of 4n and the constants always drop so it just becomes o of n that's how we calculate that it's you know and the idea is if you're running through a loop with a billion things four times that is not particularly fast, but it's a lot faster than looping through it a billion squared. Um, whereas, you know, they're just not even the same category, so we just kind of ignore it. Now, if you actually had a loop that ran a thousand loops, that might be a very inefficient algorithm. So let's see. So first of all, we're just going to loop over our string once. Okay. Car equals... Um, s of i. So what I was going to do is try to build a couple of maps that indicated where we were at in the string and like various things that we'd found. Um, so the first thing we could try to do is just build like our chars found array, right? Um, so let's do that. And then if not chars found char we're going to say chars found char equals true. All right. And then let's console log our chars found at the end of the array. And let's run that. I remember not to save this time. Okay. So that gives us A, B, C. That gives us B. That gives us P, W, K, E. That's not super helpful at this point because once I get out of this loop, this is all the information I'm going to have to figure out how to get that substring. Not the most amazing thing ever. So what well, might be more useful to determine what position we found these characters at. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say, okay, let's make this an array then. Char is found char dot push. Um, I. What does that give us? Might give us a little bit more information. Okay, so now we see A is found at 0, 3, B is found at these positions, and C is found here. Okay. So is that enough information to figure out a substring? Maybe. Um, what we need to do then is let's try, uh, let's try having some pointers. So the idea behind a pointer is that at least in the way we're going to handle it, is that you have something that points to a certain location in that string and you move that along based on various data. We're actually going to have two pointers. We're going to have a front and a back pointer. And so we're going to kind of move them as appropriate. Um, they'll probably both move forward, um, but we're going to try to move them appropriately in order to figure out what our substring is. So I'm going to say uh, start pointer equals zero and end pointer. Let's just start that at zero also. Well, let's start at one. Though we do know we can get an empty string, but in the case of an empty string, equals zero, we're just going to return um, zero. So that means that at this point, because I have put that in here, I can guarantee in the rest of this algorithm, I will always have at least one character, which means an end pointer of one is not going to go off the end of the string. So now, in this case, um, let's say Let's try this. We're going to loop over the, um, actually, you know what? If we're just looping over this, let's just make this 
um, our loop. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say end pointer less than s dot length and pointer plus plus. All right, now you notice I'm not putting a, a first opening statement there. I'm just using line 25. I could put line 25 in here, but I've already defined it later. Okay, so let's take a look here then. This end pointer, what we want to do is we want to kind of say, okay, what, what have we found so far? This is going to probably loop over the whole string, right, or close enough. But the fact that we're not doing it inside this other loop means that if we can pull this off, it'll still be O of n. So inside here, let's just get our character, s of n pointer. Okay. And then we've got our start pointer of zero and we've got our character. What I want to do is I kind of want to, just like here, I want to keep track of all the characters I found, right? Similar to how we had down here, we're keeping track of our characters found. So kind of at this point, I'm basically doing this loop. Um, I'm just doing it with some extra data so that we can avoid our outer loop. That's the idea anyway. So um, I'm actually going to call this char positions because I want chars found. Just update that everywhere. Char positions. It's not a bad thing in the interview to realize that you've named a variable wrong and just go back and rename it. Your, interview will, your interviewer will appreciate it because it gives them some clarity um, on what you're doing. So then we're going to say if not char uh, Found this actually should be char found. I did not need to rename that one. Char, then char found char equals. Now, what I want to do then is I kind of think, I didn't do it here, but I kind of want to remember the last position that we found this at. Um, but what I kind of want to do though is, and this is where it gets tricky. Because I kind of want, I kind of want to find, I kind of want to store the last place that we found a at. But if I need to loop through this array at any point, that is bad. The reason that's bad is because this array could be, in at least in this particular case, right? That array could be the entire length of the string. That could be n, which means that suddenly becomes an O of n squared solution, which we don't want. So at no point can I actually loop over this array. Here's the thing, though. In this particular case, where did my, oops. In any case, if I found a character for the first time, I can kind of assume it's the first element in this um, positions array because that's the first time that character showed up in the string. So what I can do is I can say um, char positions char of zero. So what this char found then becomes not the actual position, but the index in this array of the place that I last saw that character. Okay, so now what I want to do, let's go through that and let's um, now let's export or let's console log that. When you're dealing with complicated algorithms, it's important to debug through them, console log, run a debugger, whatever, just so you can see what you're dealing with. Okay, so the first time we found A was at position zero. First time we found B was at position one and C at position two. That's fine. So that let's let's look at the next A. Okay. So let's say we get into this else case where we already have something in there. Oh, also, we also want to um, have our highest in here, right? So I'm actually just going to put the highest because we're trying to keep track of that, right? Um, so then we may have to move that at some point, is equals zero. So at this point, then this is going to at least say if we found another character and we have never seen that character before, um, oh, this is not going to be substring dot length, is it? We're going to have to figure out something for this. Figure, figure the length of substring here. But that's kind of where we need to set it. Actually, let's use our OK. I like the OK better. Is OK. And then we say is true. And then down here, we're like, OK. 
it's okay, might. You know what? Actually, no, because we're always going to make it okay, right? Because we're not looping over every substring. The idea here is that we're always going to make it okay once we get out of this else block. So I'm going to say here, compute substring. Or kind of like try to figure out what that is. Um, so then we don't need the is okay at all. So in here, this else block, this is where the big question comes up. We have this now. We want A to jump to here, right? And that's actually kind of easy. We're going to say old position equals um, char found char. That gets us our old position. And then we're going to say, okay, here's the thing. This is the next time we found A. So we can just advance this. This is the old index of the position. So our new index, right, is just going to be um, old index plus one. Because we know that the next index in char positions is going to be the next time that that character ever showed up. These have to be in order because of how we sorted through it in the for loop. The thing to note here is every time we're writing a chunk of code, we're allowing ourselves to make assumptions later on that make things easier for us. And that's important because the more assumptions about your data you can make, the less checking you have to do. And the less checking you have to do, the less looping around your data. Okay, so this should be fine. So let's do this. Const old position equals char positions char old index. New position equals char positions oops, char old index plus one. Now you notice nothing I've done here is is non-constant. These are all constant because these are all just, this is an object lookup, which happens constant. This is an array lookup for a specific index, which is constant time. So now I know the old position and the new position of my letters in constant time. So what I got to do then is now, just like before, like let's say I'm looking at here. If I get, um, we get PW, the second W we get, well, we need to drop zero and one. Right, we need to drop that. For some reason, that P doesn't get added in here. That's kind of interesting. Oh, because this starts at, at one. Let's drop that to zero then. Might not even need our start pointer. Well, no, we do need the start pointer. So basically everything between the start pointer and our old index, our old position needs to be dropped from the list. Um, so how do we do that? Well, what we want to do we have our char positions, which looks like this, or our, our char found. So we know these particular things in here. The problem is we don't, well, I guess, yeah, we can look up the position of everything, but we'd have to loop over everything. I'd rather not do that um, if we can. So let's see how can we improve upon that without having to loop over char positions so now we know the old position we actually don't necessarily care too much about the new position because that's just the one we're pending on we need to get rid of the old position and anything before it because that can't be part of this substring okay so here yeah let's just get rid of that so old position anything from our start pointer oh that's why oh yeah because our start pointer goes to old position plus one at this point um, equals old position plus one because that's our new place that we're starting off at. So we need to, before that happens, delete everything between start pointer and old position that is in our list here without looping it. That might be kind of difficult actually. That might be kind of hard because we are definitely going to have to loop over something in order to get that data. Hmm. So how do we go about that? That that's the real question. Because if I start looping, if I loop at any point over my char uh, positions or my char found, that can be O of n at some point in the worst case, which means that this becomes an O of n squared. It's definitely a more efficient O of n squared, but it still falls in that classification, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So something we could do, and it'll take a lot of memory. But we could actually keep a specific copy of char found for every single character that we found in our list. 
Um, <clears throat> and what that allows us to do is at any point in that character, we know all the characters that came before it. So we can delete them appropriately or advance them appropriately. And <clears throat> so the problem is then whenever we update something like this, the update becomes really complicated because we have to start updating it from all those values as well. So that might not work. Um, yeah, so basically right here, we need <clears throat> to remove everything between a start pointer and old position. Let's just do that as a brute force and maybe let's see if a better solution presents itself. All right, so let's see here. Um, the other thing we could do is as we're going through here, we could maybe build that, but that might not be possible. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm actually going to loop over all our keys. That's key uh, of oh, in char found. Okay, position is going to be, well, index is gonna be char found of key. This is just getting the index. Position is going to be char positions key position index. If position is, well, really, if you think about it, the position should. Our position should never be less than start pointer, actually if we're removing everything below it. Yeah, the position the position really should never be less than start pointer. We should never at any point have anything that, that is less than that because we're always deleting it. Let's just keep it around for now. Let's see. If position is um, actually be greater than or equal to start pointer or position is less than or equal to um, old position, we delete char found key. All right, so what I want to do then is I want to actually put some console logs in here. Deleting key at key at position. Um, long found duplicate um, char at um, I old position old position and then it, whenever we get out of this loop I'm going to console log the um, the positions char found now let's just see here let's run this okay <clears throat> oh, we got an error. I is not defined. That is because I called it in pointer, not I. Completely reasonable. Completely reasonable. All right, let's see here. Okay, so A0, B0, C0, <clears throat> found duplicate B. Oh, we didn't find duplicate A though, huh? That seems weird. Why wouldn't we find duplicate A first? At four. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah, three got skipped for some reason. Let's do this. Oh, you know why? Because this not is falsy. And so it actually checks zero as false. And so the A position was zero, so it's never going to be true. So it's always going to overwrite the A. That's not great. Um, if A equals undefined, we're just going to do specifically undefined for that then. Rather than a falsy check. All right, there we go. Found duplicate A, old position zero. Deleting A at three and then deleting B at four. Oh, this needs to be an and. Otherwise, it's trying to delete everything that's above. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Found duplicate A at three, old position zero. Okay, this has been moved. Found duplicate B. Okay, and then that deletes A at three, which it shouldn't. It did that because our start pointer got moved up. Um, let's do that. That's a long new start pointer is print that 
is the problem because it's deleting everything including the start pointer so we need to actually go to that old position uh, let's try that sometimes all you have to do is just add one remove one see what happens all right new start pointer is zero at this point that's fine well is it found duplicate b at position four and yeah, so what that means then is we need to delete everything up to the one. We shouldn't be deleting. We should be deleting old position. Uh huh. See, how is this old position zero? This shouldn't be that. Yeah, also, why is B1 here? Hmm, let's check this out. Checking, um, adding char with index. Oh, you know what? This is adding the position. So I'm actually adding the position here, but I was treating it as the index. So this needs to be zero then. So in case you didn't realize what was wrong there, basically I've been assuming that what's in char found is actually an index of where the position is. So that I don't have to do a bunch of looping. However, this I'm adding the actual position in. The index should be zero, which we know we can assume because that's the first time we've ever seen it. So that's what was going wrong there. Actually, all of those should technically be zero because they're the index of their individual little things. Okay, zero, 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 that's perfect. All right, A1, found duplicate B, old position one. New start pointer is one, so now we've got A1, B1, C0, that's good. Okay, C1, cool. Deleting A, found duplicate B at six, old position four, which is right, but we should not, let's see. Oh yeah, because that deletes that B and that should delete both of these because then it should be CB. All right, that actually seems like that works pretty good. I know this might be a little incomprehensible to all of you, especially because these, you know, what if we just, no, we can't do positioning because we need to grab the other position from this particular index and I can't loop over it um, yeah so basically this 0 0 0 here is the index in the char positions array so it's like the zeroth time I've it's, this is the nth time I've seen that so this is basically like okay I found another a which means this jumps to the nth time I've seen a the first second time I've seen B C this one is like okay second time I've third time I've seen B but a just gets dropped C is there. This actually looks pretty good because this is A, B, C. This is B, C, A. This is uh, C, A, B. And this is again A, B, C. This then is um, C, B, I think. Yeah, because that's second B. And then this is just B. And we know that B, B is not a valid one, so we're not even trying it. So I think this works. I think this does what it's supposed to do. I'll have to check it against a couple others. But what I want to do now is how do we compute our substring? Well, the substring is going to be the number of keys in this array, right? And so this, again, we've still got this problem here. We're looping all the, over all those keys. But while we're looping over it, let's just say, OK, we have highest is 0. Every time we add a char, our highest goes up, right? And every time we remove a char, um, oops, our count, our highest goes down. So let's actually do this. Stir count equals zero. And then stir count, because we're adding a char, and every time we delete a char, stir count goes down. Yeah, but also the thing is, stir count needs to go up at the end here, because we're also adding a char, right? So here we get our duplicate A, we are dropping A, but then we're adding another A back on. So this drops the A, so we decrement the count. Then we need to add it back on at the very end. So now what we can say here is we can just say stir count. So see, this is, this is a common thing that we do. If we've got the ability while we're looping to track something, then track it. Let's see what this gives us. I'm kind of curious. Okay, oh, this gives me... <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Let's return highest then. Let's just see what this is. Okay, that gives me six, which is definitely wrong. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, in this case, if we didn't delete anything, then we don't need to increment actually. So that's the thing. Right, right here we need to remove everything. Oh, so maybe we don't increment because we're not actually deleting the previous key. We're just incrementing the start pointer. Hmm. There we go, three, three. So these all pass actually. Let's see if all the test cases pass. I'm kind of curious now. I bet they'll throw something really nasty at us. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, this, we gave them 12. They're expecting 11. Why is this a string? What is this string? This is a terrible string. Anyway, so you can see it's not completely perfect. Um, I don't want to take too much time going down this rabbit hole, but basically this is, this is also technically it's an O of N um, squared because of this loop here. The fact that we have to loop over our char found to delete the keys. There's probably a clever way to actually take a hash and get this data as well. So we can just look it up and delete them appropriately. Um, so for example, oh, you know what we could do? Now, if we had um, some way that this was actually an array rather than um, an object, which might not work for other lookups, but then we can actually do a splice in between those two indexes and just splice out. On the other hand, splice might be, splice might be an O of N operation too. We'd have to look that up. But it's also going to be more efficient because we're not computing all the substrings. We're computing char positions running over that once. And then this is only happening when we're finding duplicates. So this is actually the least efficient case. Here's the thing though, in this particular case, we only will ever have one index in char found. So really this could, it, the, the issue is this basically becomes at worst kind of n times n over two. The issue is constants go away. So that still becomes n times n. So it is a more efficient O of n squared than what we had before, but it's still O of n squared. And this is why finding O of n solutions for this stuff is really complicated. Before we go, I just wanna go over this a little bit. Uh, oops. Turn zero, just to you know reiterate what we did. So first of all, if the length is zero, return zero. This allows us to assume now that our string length is above one, which is valuable in some cases. The more assumptions that you can make, the better, because it just lets you do things down the line. Now we compute all, we make a map, okay? And we push onto that every single position in order. Now, the fact that we're going over the string in order, we can assume that this array is in order. So the first position that we find that letter is at the front. The second is in position one, the third is in position two, etc. That becomes valuable later on. This is our first loop. Then we actually, I'm realizing we don't, oh, we use start pointer. It's fine. So in this case, we're basically looping over. I could have used I for this instead of end pointer. We're looping over the string again. Then what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we found a character and we're building a map similar to what we did in our previous one, but we're saying, okay, have we seen this character before? If so, we're setting it to zero. This zero in char found indicates the index in char positions that we're currently on. So we're saying, yeah, we just found this character. And since it's the first time we found it, we know the first place we could have possibly found it is the zeroth index of char positions for that character because that array is in order. So that's an assumption that we're now drawing on. And we increment the count of our string because we pushed another character into it. Now we say, okay, old index, if, if, and this is the, this is the meat of it right here. Otherwise, if we've already found that character, we take the old index and we increment that index. So we say, okay, we found the second version of this. Well, it has to be at index one because that's how that array data structure is set up. So this is a very easy operation for us. We also can immediately in constant time look up that old position without having to loop back through because we know exactly what it was. Then we basically, this is the complicated part. We have to loop through all the characters we found, get their positions. This is constant. Everything in here is constant, but this loop is O of N potentially. And then we say, okay, well, is it between this position and the one we need to get rid of? If so, we just delete it and we, we decrement our key. And then we move our start pointer to the start of the next substring. And then it's very easy to compute our substring size. It's just the string count at that current time. So again, doesn't work perfectly. If we worked on this for probably another 15 minutes, we'd probably get it to work perfectly, but I'm not gonna take that kind of time. Uh, but it's a good start. And so you can see, again, we did not completely succeed with making an O of N solution because O of N solutions are really hard.
They involve a lot of really complicated code. We did make a more efficient solution though. So this will, and the thing is that doesn't matter when you're talking about classification, but if you're talking about a character that's 400,000, or a string that's 400,000 characters long, only having to loop over n over 2 does actually give you some pretty large performance increase. It just doesn't change the category. So don't don't try to don't try to rules lawyer that with your interviewer and don't be like, oh, but it's a little bit more efficient, blah blah blah. No, it's the same class class. They will appreciate if you take the time to attempt to make it more efficient, even if you don't manage to get there. As long as you're on the right path, they will they will definitely count that in your favor. Anyway, I hope this is helpful and I'll see you all next time.